Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Autosport. In today's DIY video, we'll be showing you how to replace rear brake pads and rotors on a late model BMW with the electric parking brake. Now these are unique in that the electric parking brake actuator must be retracted before we can perform any service on the rear brakes. Okay, here we have the various parts and tools we'll be using for this procedure. Of course, we have our new brake pads and brake rotor, and we have the Bentley repair manual for the chassis we'll be working on, and our mechanics gloves because brake work is very messy. We have the brake parts cleaner, the brake parts cleaner brush, anti-seize compound, the disc brake synthetic grease, our caliper piston compressor tool, the BAV Autometric tool set, and the special thin 15 millimeter wrench for removing the caliper guide bolts. Finally, we have our diagnostic tool, which allows us to retract the parking brake adjusters electrically. But in this video, we'll show you how to do this without the diagnostic tool. Now let's get right to it. Here we are at the left rear brake on our 2011 535i. We've released the parking brake using the interior brake actuation switch. The brake assembly looks like a common BMW setup until we see the parking brake actuator on the back of the caliper. Before removing the caliper, we'll unplug the parking brake actuator harness plug. Push the release tab on the securing clip to remove the plug. Often, a small screwdriver inserted under the end of the clip will help with the removal. Here's the release tab. Remove the two caliper guide pin mounting bolts using a 13 mm socket or wrench and the special thin 15 mm open end wrench. Hold the guide pin with the 15 mm wrench and loosen and remove the mounting bolt. Repeat this procedure to remove the lower mounting bolt. The caliper is now ready to be removed. We're performing this procedure on the left rear brake assembly. The right side is the same except for the brake pad sensor wire. On the right side, dismount the wire from the various mounting points and unplug the harness plug inside the connection box. Once the caliper is removed from the bracket, you can remove the inner brake pad and use a screwdriver or a small pry tool to pry the sensor tip from the brake pad. Use a mechanics pry bar to remove the caliper from the pads and the mounting bracket. Notice that the piston face is not hollow and there are no inner pad clips. We'll now remove the parking brake actuator by loosening and removing the two mounting screws. Use a Torx bit to remove the two actuator mounting screws. Note that the second screw here also secures the wiring harness mounting bracket. Gently twist and remove the actuator assembly. Use a Torx bit to retract the parking brake assembly by turning the bit clockwise until it stops. Note that the piston is still extended. We'll now push the caliper piston in, just as we would with a standard brake caliper, using the piston compressor tool. Compress the piston until it stops.
With the piston fully compressed, reinstall the parking brake actuator. Now that the caliper piston compression is completed, we can get to the pad and rotor replacement. Pry the pads from the mounting bracket. Note that these pads have less than 1 8 inch of material. This would be good for a couple thousand more miles depending on conditions and driving style. On this car, we're going to replace the rotors due to overall wear. While the rotor surface is smooth and worn evenly, there's a very noticeable edge ridge on both the outer and inner faces. This indicates heavy rotor wear. This rotor is worn thinner than the minimum specified thickness. In order to remove the rotor, we'll remove the caliper mounting bracket by loosening and removing the two mounting bolts. Lift the bracket from the hub. Note the two sliding guide pins. The boots should not be cracked or ripped and the pins should be well lubricated and slide freely. Note the anti-rattle clips. We can now remove the rotor. Loosen and remove the rotor securing bolt using an Allen bit. Before trying to loosen the bolt, be sure the bit is fully seated and secure into the Allen recess. At this point, the rotor is ready to be removed. However, there may be enough corrosion at the hub flange to prevent removal. In this case, a hammer can be used to help loosen the rotor. Hit the face of the rotor's mounting hub. If this does not free the rotor, hit the inside face of the rotor's friction ring. This should only be performed gently or if the rotor is not to be reused. You can see the rotor wear more clearly when the rotor is removed. Clean the corrosion from the hub flange using the brake parts cleaner and the brake cleaning brush. Wipe the flange clean. Apply a bit of anti-seize to the flange. Install the new rotor, being careful not to get the braking surfaces greasy. Line up the rotor securing bolt hole and install the new rotor securing bolt. Apply a bit of anti-seize to the rotor securing bolt prior to installing. Note that we did not spray the rotor's braking surfaces with brake cleaner. This rotor has an anti-corrosive coating that does not need to be removed. Use the brake parts cleaner and a clean rag to remove any grease from handling the rotor. Before installing the caliper mounting bracket, we'll service the guide pins and the anti-rattle clips. First, we'll pry the clips off. Clean the areas for the clips with the brake parts cleaner and brake cleaning brush. Check the condition of the guide pin boots and the guide pins. Clean and lubricate the pins with the disc brake grease. These pins have recently been serviced, so they're fine to reassemble. Apply the disc brake grease to the bracket where the anti-rattle clips install. Apply a small amount and spread it evenly. Install the new anti-rattle clips.
Apply the disc brake grease to the trough areas of the clips where the brake pad tabs contact the slide. As before, don't over apply the grease. We don't want it oozing out on the rotor. Install the caliper mounting bracket using the two bolts. Torque the bolts to the value specified in the applicable Bentley Publishing Repair Manual. Clean any grease from the rotor's braking surfaces using the brake parts cleaner and a clean rag. Install the new brake pads. Insert the pads and align the tabs into the troughs in the anti-rattle clips. We're now ready to install the caliper with the piston fully retracted or compressed to allow for the new, thicker brake pads. Slide the caliper over the pads, making sure that the caliper's mounting ears are clear of the guide pins. Install the guide pin bolts. Tighten the bolts to the value specified in the Bentley Publishing Repair Manual for your model. And now all we have to do is activate the parking brake to reset the actuator and this job is complete. Okay, so there's the procedure for replacing the brake pads and rotors on a late model BMW with the electric parking brake system. Remember though, you can use the diagnostic tool to retract the parking brakes and have all of the other benefits of the diagnostic tool system. Everything you've seen here is available in our online store at bavauto.com or give our advisors a call at 800-535-2002 and they'll be glad to help you out. If you've liked this video, please hit your like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram and like us on Facebook. Now thanks for watching and we're off to do another DIY video.